but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. 
Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important. Just knowing you're there when we need you. You've been patient with us, helping us to grow and learn from all the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. And most of all, you've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today, we thank you, Dad, for all of this and so much more. Happy Father's Day. It's Father's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful fathers out there. Not just for being shining examples of how great a dad can be, but also for being wonderful reflections of who God is.
Good morning. Good morning. I see people that are still coming in, so welcome in. I know we've got uh, some, some special guests. I forget the word that Chris used, but uh, I know there's some people here today that haven't been that uh, everybody who is familiar is going to want to see. But today is a good day for all of you to just enjoy each other's presence and then most of, them, most of all, enjoy the presence of the Lord. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, just wanted to make sure that you knew that. And hopefully you have a blue connect card. If you are here today for the first time, we would love for you to fill that out. And uh, just so that we know you're here, if you're one of uh, someone who attends regularly, that is your chance to be able to give us any updated information and some prayer requests. That would be awesome. If you prefer to not use pen and paper, there are QR codes on the backs of your chairs. Those, if you're not familiar what they are, I don't know about you, but everywhere in life seems to be QR codes now. <laughs> um, but uh, you just simply point your, your, you can use a QR code reader on your smartphone, or you just point your camera, and when a li little yellow thing pops up, you just click it, and, and uh, it'll sort of guide you through from there. I'm sure you can figure it out. If you are someone who still likes to, to support the church financially through what I would say a, an older style of, of help, meaning either cash, change, checks. There are wooden boxes in the back. Those are our blessing boxes. So if you would like to bless the, the church that way, feel free on your way out to drop something off there. Um, speaking of finances, you will notice on the end of the altar there is a basket. For those of you, I've already heard several people I say I forgot, we were collecting money in baby bottles to help a new generation support that ministry. And the collection date, it runs Mother's Day through Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. Um, by the way, I think I just forgot the, the announcement. So you're going to see that afterwards, and then we'll start from there. I am a little out of sorts today, can you tell? Um, but that's all right. We'll, we'll make it. So there's a video announcement that should have been before, and then I was supposed to say all that. But So I didn't forget Father's Day. I just forgot the video announcement. Anyway, at any rate, if you brought your bottles with some, some cash change, check, whatever, feel free to put it in there. Um, I did have someone ask me today, if we're writing a check, I would say write it to a new generation. That way it just goes through them, and we don't have to, to go through the finance book here. There will be no lift groups tonight, um, official lift groups. It's a good time. We, we try on every holiday to allow you time, to spend time with your, your family. And as you're going to hear in the sermon a little later, that family is very extensive. So we'll just give you permission to spend it with whoever you want to. Um, just nothing official here. And spending time together is a great way to get to know each other. And we're also giving you an opportunity to support missions on June 30th, uh, the Birchfields are going to be with us. They're going to have a service at 7, but we're going to have a, a pizza dinner at 6 o'clock. So you need to sign up for the dinner. You don't need to sign up for the mission, but you do need to sign up for the dinner. I'm just going to tell you, if you're not signed up and you show up, there may or may not be pizza for you. So if you want to eat, then make sure we have your name on the sign-up sheet. And there are plenty of sign-up sheets out there. So um, when you're, you're finished, when you go through the sanctuary doors, behind that on the wall, you'll see what we call our connect board. It's awesome ways to connect. Um, if, if, if there's not a place, it would be a good opportunity to put your phone number. That way people can get a hold of you if they're not, they don't already have your number. But there is a place there for everyone. So with that said, can we do the video announcement now? <laughs> hey, dads. It's really good to see you. I know you may not hear this a lot, but we want you to know how important it is that you're here. You don't have an easy job. Being a dad comes with incredible challenges, and sometimes it's hard to know if you're doing it right. But you should know that being here right now is such an important part. In the Bible, God gave us this command. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, and might. These words should be in your heart. You should teach them to your children. 
You should talk of them when you're sitting at home and when you're out in public. You should speak of them from the time you wake up in the morning until the time you fall asleep at night. So what does it mean to be a good father? It means loving God with all of your heart, soul, and might, and teaching your children to do the same. And it's such a great example that you're here today, seeking more of Jesus and worshiping Him unashamed. The kids here see you. The young men and women are watching, and as they continue to grow, they'll remember and do the same. So thanks, dads. Thank you for your presence and example. We pray that God will bless you, renew your spirit, and draw you closer to Him so you can continue to be a shining influence to all those around you. Happy Father's Day. Let's pause and pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we, we come before your throne today to give you praise and honor and glory. And we're keenly aware of the fact that there may be some here who haven't had the experience of a good earthly father. And so these days are difficult for them. We, are, we know and we acknowledge today that you are a good, good father. <laughs> and we love you. And we are so grateful for all of your provisions and your grace. And as we come to you today, Jesus, we, we come with a variety of needs and wants and desires and hopes. There may be some coming today for looking for a brand new beginning Maybe it's week after week they struggle, but here we are before the throne saying, Father, forgive us. Help us, Jesus, to do better. Give us a new start and a new, new hope and a new power and a new grace. Some of us have come today, and Lord, our bodies are wearing out. And we say hallelujah because it doesn't matter what happens to the body. It's what happens to our soul. And we come to give you praise and honor because you have given to us a new life and a promise of eternal life. And someday, Father, we will see you and we will worship you because we will stand before your throne, seeing you face to face, giving you glory. I thank you today for your presence and the opportunity that we have to just worship. I pray this morning that you will bless our our worship team as they lead us in, in our worship time. And may our hearts and our minds and our spirits be free to just give you praise. And I pray today that you would take the message of the hour. Oh, God, that you would, that you would shape it and form it to fit each of our hearts as you always do. And may each of us find what we need for our day and for our week so that we might draw closer to you, as the, as the video said. May our hearts be filled. May our spirits be encouraged. And may, may we be prepared with your power to live our week out for you. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come now. Minister to us as we just yield to you. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says.
Better? There we are. Let's pray again. Lord God, we come to you just praising you, asking, Lord, that you would help us truly to bow down in your presence, to understand that you are God. You alone are God, and you have amazing things for us. Lord, I pray today that you would rain down your power on us today. Rain down your spirit in a fresh and new way. Help us all, Lord, know that we are in your presence. Help us all to have an encounter with you today. We need to leave this place different than we came today, Lord. We need to leave this place knowing that we have been freshly filled with your Holy Spirit power. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us away. Thank you, Jesus, for so much more than we'll ever understand. Thank you, Jesus, for healing, for deliverance, for transforming our lives and giving us the ability to serve you and others. Now, God, today we come to you praising you and asking, Lord, that you would fill this place with your presence. Make this place a holy sanctuary where we will hear your word proclaimed to us in a way that changes what we hear, what we say, what we do. Help us, God, to truly be open to what you want from us and help us to receive it well. Now, God, as we prepare to hear your word, I pray that you would prepare our ears, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to receive what you're bringing us. Here we are to worship, Lord. We worship you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. We ask, Lord, that you fill us with your spirit today. I pray, God, for a special anointing over Pastor Barb as she brings this message. I pray for a special blessing over every person here, not just men because it's Father's Day, but every person here, that we would hear what you have for us. God, we've been in your presence, and we want to continue to be in your presence every day of our lives. So show us, lead us, take us there today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See, I didn't forget. <laughs> In fact, I thought, though, like for two weeks, I've been I've been preparing this, so just got like uh, ahead of myself this morning. Whether or not you've ever heard this phrase, though, right? Wait till your father gets home. I'll be honest, complete dis disclosure. I was trying to find a Leave It to Beaver clip. I found four thousand in like three hours worth of, worth of wasted time trying to find those words and wasn't able to. So, um, so I, I borrowed it off of that. But what I wanted to, uh, to try to convey with that message this morning is that I think that we could all agree, right, that anticipation is, is worse than actually feeling the effects of once it gets there, right? Especially even those negative effects. As bad as, as, bad as the results are from our negative effects, the anticipation of what's coming somehow is so much more. However, today, I want you to understand that the anticipation of which we wait today is not worth fearing. In fact, I happen to think that God has a gift for all of us today, not just fathers. So, And I would actually like to celebrate that gift that he has given us, whether it's in, in physical form or on your phones, um, by standing in awe and reverence of God's word as we give him 
our gift of attention this morning. Um, I'll actually be reading from Colossians chapter 3, and I'm going to be reading verses 13 through 17 out of the NIV version. It says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. It's only five verses and as I was studying the different versions, I came across the easy to read. Um, we read a lot out of the New Living, but the easy to read version said it in a way that just resonated with my heart. And I was reading it again this morning to see if it was just like a one-time thing. And I thought, no, this is good. So let me read it. This is the same scripture, Colossians 3, 12 through 17, out of the easy to read version. It says, God has chosen you and made you his holy people. He loves you. So your new life should be like this. Show mercy to others. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. Together with these things, the most important part of your new life is to love each other. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. It is for peace that you were chosen to be together in one body and always be thankful. Let the teaching of Christ live inside you richly. Use wisdom to teach and counsel each other. Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Everything you say and everything you do should be done for Jesus, our, your Lord. In all you do, give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And you may be seated as I, as I pray. Lord, you know the message that you've given me. And I just pray that as I have humbly received it, as I've thought about it, Lord, that you would be glorified as I share it. And I pray that if there's anything that I left out, you would add it. And if there's something that I added that you don't want in there, Lord, that you would either strike it or you would close the ears of those who are listening. But above all, Lord, I pray that our hearts would be open to receive the word that you've given us today. Lord, to not just hear it with our ears, but to hear it with our lives lived out in thankfulness to you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but if I were to tell you after reading these two passages um, that this scripture is telling us that what we do isn't just for our own benefit, would you agree with me? Okay, that's good. I'm glad you agree with me because then I don't know where I'd go after that. So, <laughs> Because when I read that scripture, right, that's what I was hearing. That's exactly what I was hearing. It's like, oh, this isn't about us, right? So I felt pretty confident that this morning that I could tell you that what we do isn't primarily just for us, our own benefit, right? Especially not if we're calling ourselves a Christ follower. And I thought, wow, this is a perfect scripture for Father's Day. So I just want to put a quick plug in for planning. This was planned out a long time ago. We don't really look at the calendar. We look more at blocks of how many weeks do we have here. 
And when I read this, I thought, wow, can it get any better, right? When we hear that God, who is our Heavenly Father, has chosen you and made you his holy people, that he loves you. So my first thought was, oh, fathers? Man, that's a lot of responsibility to accept, but that's good. But it's apparent to me that he doesn't want any of us to get really comfortable there and think that it's his love for you, that it's a clear path to go on about living your life without any consideration of a heart change because of that love. Does that make sense? That heart change comes from his love. And I think that because when he tells us in his scripture about that love, it's immediately followed up with the words as we read in NIV, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. That's what that clip was about, right? If, if you ever watched those shows or any of the other shows that, where it was reverted to the father getting home, if that father didn't come in set with his mind on doing what's best for his family, it wasn't going to look good, right? And so for us today, getting that picture in our head as a Christ follower to clothe ourselves, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, right? And I don't know if you noticed the sign out front, um, the marquee on our, on our church sign, but early in the week, I asked them to put this up. It says, one way to the Father. Now, I had a very, very good in, a reason for this. It was very intentional. Because I thought for the general person passing by, they were going to read it. They were going to think the thought that the rest of the world does. It's Father's Day, Right? They might be thinking it had something to do with that, but I also wanted to challenge those who know Christ and are following him, those that pass by that know something about the church, I wanted to challenge them that it should be a reminder to give thanks to Jesus because he is the only way to the Father. Right? Just to bring back, what is that way to the Father? And that love included the intentional effort when Jesus left this earth that he would give us Holy Spirit to walk with us and empower to live us the very life that he exampled and was call calling us to live. So therefore, we're not on our own to do that, right? Right? And it is only through that truth that the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to live that kind of life that we're even able to live as we were instructed in that very first verse, verse 12, right? Without the help of the Holy Spirit, we can't live a life consistently, hear that, consistently live a solid life of compassion and kindness and humility and gentleness and patience. We can do it for a little while, right? We all have that barrier, though. We can take it up to here until one thing is added, right? The roof blows off the house, right? So there, fathers, men, boys, is my gift to you this morning. I didn't leave that out. Luckily, that's not your only gift. When you leave here, everyone is going to receive one of these bracelets. You're going to want them. I'm not going to tell you what's on them. And then as the men leave, we have another gift separate just for you. But don't leave without them, please. We, would, we really do want to acknowledge you. And I said men, not just fathers, right? You all have a father. Celebrate that. So... But my gift to you is that I don't want you to think that you have to live that life on your own, right? I'm going to let you off the hook, right? That all this family stuff, responsibility stuff, even if you're just talking about the family of God, 
I don't want you to think that you have to do it in your own superpower hero strength. No, you don't. In fact, just the opposite is true. You actually have to lay yourself down and you have to surrender everything to allow Christ to live in you. That should relieve you of a lot of stress, right? This is how you will actually find your way to the Father who loves you and wants what's best for you. You've all heard that slogan from the army, be all you can be, right? Did you know that God was the original author? Right? Paul starts out chapter 3 of Colossians with these powerful words. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Wow. See, Paul goes on to give us a very descriptive picture of what that life looks like before he turns to what it looks like lived out in front of others. So in other words, he wants us to understand that life change, that heart change, before he even begins to ask us to share it with others. And this is where we can find ourselves this morning. We can find ourselves living Christ-like lives out before others. But here's the catch. We get focused on, on doing it alone, right? We can't handle too many people at once. So we're like, okay, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? He says, uh-uh, uh uh-uh. Uh-uh. My Holy Spirit in you is that so you can live your life with others around you. But Pastor Barb, I don't even like everyone. <laughs> Especially those that don't already know Christ because they like sort of know how to push my buttons. Sometimes even those with Christ know how to push my Oh, no, never mind. How do I do this? How do I do this? That's exactly the point of why we need to live Christ in us. We don't need to live Barb. I've told you, that's another story. I've told you I tried to live Barb for a lot of years. Things got messed up royally, and I was miserable. But when I decided to lay myself down, and say, Jesus, you've told me I need to live you. I need to hear your word. I need to learn your word, and I need to live accordingly. Things started to change. But then I began to realize that I wasn't meant to even do it alone, right? I was meant to do it in, in a body, in fellowship, with like-minded people, hear this, and not like-minded people. Because my, stre- my faith is stretched when I'm hanging around with those that think a little bit differently than me. Now i got to know why I believe what I believe. i got to know how to communicate that. And I have to be a patient and allow God to work all that out. But man, sometimes we just feel alone, don't we? Well, hello, church. Here you are. Are you alone? No, we're not alone. We're in this together, right? Confession. Mother's Day, Father's Day, they aren't among my favorite holidays. And I think there's multiple reasons for that, but probably the biggest, this would be Mother's Day, by the way, because I'm not a father. I personally feel a whole lot of pressure to be recognized for my role in this world on a national holiday. And I feel that if I'm going to be recognized, man, then I need to recognize all of those who have come along beside me 
and made me who I am so that people can recognize me. Then I realized that would take a long time, and it would be like I, I pictured myself as a duck with a whole lot of ducklings, you know, sometimes pushing me along, right? But if I just thought, how about if I just celebrate being a member of the church, Big C Church? In prayer this morning, I talked about that, that experience of being the Big C Church, focused as on one mission, focused as one people on one thought, and that was loving God and loving others. So let me speak for a minute of that Big C Church as we look at the, the rest of Paul's message there to the Colossians. See, unity in church, in the church, comes when the people of God, the people who know God, who know Jesus as their Savior, right, view each other as family and then begin to act on that belief. So not only do we have to accept that truth, not only do we believe that truth, but then God calls it to live it out in front of others. If you're not real sure what I'm talking about, okay, think of some time that you've walked up on a conversation, maybe someone started a conversation with you about a member of their own family, okay? Member of their own family. And you are, are really just feeling drawn into this conversation, and you begin to speak into it. However, in speaking into it, you might have gone a little too far and maybe sided with the family member that's talking, you know, oh, yeah, you're right, they're a little harsh in their words, whatever it is, and all of a sudden that conversation flips, right? That family member that was upset with their own family member now begins to try to explain to you that the situation isn't really as bad as it is. In fact, maybe there's a reason why the person is being that way, Right? We've all done that. We've all been there. You know, it doesn't even really have to be a family. It could be a body of the church member, right? But Scripture tells us in 1 Timothy 5.8, says, But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for members of his household, he has denied the faith and is, and is worse than an unbeliever. Hmm. Hmm, wait a minute. So let me get this straight. We're talking about the big C church. I see people within the church, some of them in the congregation, sitting in seats, others of them just, okay, I see them, and I'm supposed to help them? And if I see a need and I don't help them, you're equating me, God, with somebody who doesn't even know you? Oh, see, I got me thinking. But then, then we read in Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 through 50 in particular, where Jesus is actually referring to the family of believers. And he says that anybody who does the will of God, those people are my father my brother, my sister, my mother, and in other words, those people. So am I supposed to then consider the church family more important than that nuclear family, that family that we were brought up in, that we grow in? Pastor Wes prayed this morning that sometimes that family isn't such a good picture. It would be easy for us not to want to be like that, but what about all of us that grew up in that solid nuclear family? By the way, I'm finding out there's less, than those, less of those in the world. We just all have our own stories, right? So if you grew up in a perfect family, I would like to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> so I haven't figured out how to create my own you know, perfect nuclear family yet, but I have decided that Jesus is the center of it, and that's a good start, right? 
But from those scriptures, we obviously see that both are important. The family of the church family, the big C church family, and our nuclear family are equally important. And that's because God is asking us to live out of his love, right? That love that we, we, we talked about, where everyone that we come in contact with is treated by the virtues of his God, our Heavenly Father, his very character. And we hear about that later there in Colossians, if, you're, if you were following along, where it says, show mercy to others, right? Virtue of God. Be kind, humble, gentle, patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. Then he goes on to say, and if you feel someone, if you feel if you feel, I want you to do, because this is on us now, that someone has wronged you, forgive them. So if you feel someone has wronged you, and you're not even sure, start with forgiving them. When you go, because you should go to them and have a conversation, but when you do, start out saying whatever, whatever your words are. Man, you hurt me, but I forgive you. But can I figure out what's going on here? And we are supposed to forgive others because the Lord forgave us, right? Start with that. Start with the forgiveness part. See, I think we're doing pretty good in the, in the church aspect of realizing we're supposed to care for each other. I think we're doing pretty good. And a lot of families are interested, and rightly so, how that their local church can help them raise their family and support their families on this quest to live life outside of what we would consider the, the world chaos of today. So in other words, if you've been to a baby dedication recently, if you've been, um, um, what's the other thing when it's not called a dedication? I just went blank. No, that's not the word. Anyway, I, I can't think of the word. It's not baptism that I was looking for, but anyway, it could be baptism when you're baptizing a baby, whatever the point is, you will have heard the words that it's our responsibility to help raise that child, right? So when we become a member of the church, and we've had a lot of people join us because they have had a need, and our family has included them right in, loved them, and they're sitting here among you now, and the beauty is we have no clue who those people even are. There is no separation there, right? And so that's right to think that we should take care of each other. We just, we just heard that. And especially as this world just like spins out of control more and more. But I would say at the same time, and too often, families actually forget that the ultimate purpose of the church is not to serve them as individuals. The purpose of the church is here, actually, so those people can begin to serve the family of God. See, this goes back to what I was actually saying in the beginning, that as a Christ follower, the benefit's not for just us. The benefit of our life in Christ should be being a part of a local church that isn't just about getting what we want to get. Not about more members. Not, about, not for the reason of numbers, not for the reason of any of that, but for reason of seeing the kingdom grow, right? And it's about so that when so-and-so gives their testimony and they happen to know somebody else 
that's a Christian, those testimonies mingle. As more and more people live Christ out in front of people in the world, we are no longer separated and doing it on our own. But we've all got to be living Jesus in us. At any time that the family of God stops living Jesus in front of people, people are going to pick up that opposite side really quick. See, living as a family of God is important. Because there are people out there who need to live in fellowship. There are hurting people. There are lonely people. There are people that still think that they're alone. I would say there's people in this sanctuary right now that still need to know Jesus, that still need to realize his purpose for their life, and they still need people to come along beside of them. They haven't got that yet so that they can then begin to pour out in others. But when we serve, that is the unity of the body because that's when everybody begins to realize it's not about me. See, serving doesn't allow that opportunity, right? When we're pouring out, pouring out, pouring out, we, we have to realize that we're doing it for something other than ourselves. And if you would wonder, is that statement really true? Because I think I know people who are serving that are still thinking about themselves, and that's probably a little true, but that service that God sees is for others. And if you're not completely sold on the fact right, of that being true, then I would like you to look around, come to some of our outreach things, come to some of our things that aren't on Sunday morning worship, and observe people who are volunteering at our food pantry, at our hot meals, some, to some degree, our community garden, if you follow them on Facebook, you'll see that there's people all the time offering help and suggestions. And when I started looking at all of that, I realized, you know what? It's not even our adults that are getting this. Our, our, our kids are too. Because what I've found when I'm hearing them, they're all trying to race each other to church so they can be the ones to get to help Mary with the coffee this morning. Maybe I'd have a better gift of hospitality if I would have started serving earlier in my life, right? See, every Christ follower is called to serve to the best of their ability, but with the love of God showing through them. Romans 12, we hear that a lot around here because it all starts with that heart change, right? Romans 12 is a great roadmap to understand this type of living. And in, in part, it says, and I say in part because Romans 12 is too long to put up there, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Don't serve with a gloomy face, or man, I have to be here again. No. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need, right? All Christians, not just the so-called full-time Christian workers, we call those vocational, usually vocational pastors, of some time, not those aren't the only ones that are supposed to be serving the Lord. Romans 12 is only 21 verses long. I would in, in, encourage you to read it, but as you're reading it, ask yourself if you're tru truly living as that God-chosen person 
that we heard about in Colossians 3. I had to I had to spend some time doing that. This message came with a lot of a lot of prayer and a lot of man, I, I really have to make sure I'm right with you, God, before I say this. And guess what? He let me know some areas. You're not doing so good in that category. You know why? You're back to you again. Oh, man. I thought I got over that. Well, I thought you did too. What are you going to do about it? Well, I guess I'm going to surrender that to you. Okay. Well, let's go then. All right. Right? Serving one another, serving in general, doesn't mean that you're just part of a team. It's not just that you're on the outreach committee. It's not that you volunteer at the food pantry. It's not that you're on the greeting team. It's not... Serving is about going outside of the group in which you find yourself connected with. It's called a peer group. And we volunteer there because that's where we feel most comfortable, right? If you don't believe me, switch up where you're at. Go someplace else next time. Jump right in. See how you feel. No, we like it. We know the routine. We know the people, right? You remember intergenerational families that used to be? Remember when families all lived in the same town? You know, people didn't venture too far, right? Grandparents were right around the corner. That Not right around the corner, might have been 15 minutes, but it wasn't like you had to get on an airplane like it is in today's culture. You had to 12, travel 12 hours, maybe around the world, right? I was just at a global event. The neatest thing I think I saw were like families from another country greeting families from this country, right? You had people who were representing the African region and their brother was on the USA-Canada region. And they were meeting in Indianapolis as a family. Yeah, that's what I said. Wow. And it wasn't just brothers and sisters in Christ. These were like biological fan families, right? Times have changed. You know, so we're not just in other parts of the, our country. We're in other parts of our world. And this, I believe, is one reason that the model of the church needs to shift. And we really need to be intentional about building intergenerational relationships. One of my pet peeves is hearing about this younger generation not wanting anything to do with church. I should have taken a picture of our younger generation that was there. We had a lot of representation. We, we actually spoke with one of our one of our young adults now grew up in the, the teen ministry at, on the Florida District. Her family went to Chicago one day, and she stayed there because she said, this is my church, and I want to hear what they're doing. I want to be a voice into that. I think she might be 21 years old now. That's pretty impressive. So there was a statistic shared um, it was a 2011 Barna study, so it's been a while, and so the percentages might be off, but I don't, the second part of it is what's not off. 59% of, of millennials who have left the church stayed because someone from a different generation than what they were part of stayed connected with them, made intentional relationships, brought them along in their ministries, valued them, saw the potential that God was still a work in them. I think that's pretty impressive. So I would rather focus, no, 59% left, 41%, 41%, left, that's, I, I said that backwards, 41% is the ones who stayed, but that's a pretty high percentage. If we would take 
the effort and the time to form these, these relationships. The kids aren't that scary, guys. Come into our, our Wednesday night, what, night arc program. We have some of you that are brave enough to do that. You do have to be careful. You might want to be standing next to a wall because they're a little rambunctious, right? But they're getting it. And I don't want them to grow up and leave the children's ministry, the teen ministry, even the young adult ministry without them knowing that there is a group behind them. So there's some questions that I build into this as I was hearing all of this, talking about unity and about the church being our family. The first one is, what's the volunteer rate here at CCNAS? Are we any higher than the normal statistic that 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work? What age groups actually have a volunteer assignment? Are we doing a good job of finding places for those that can call this their church home that are younger than you? Why aren't people volunteering? Hmm. What's the reason? Some of us have some good ideas, good reasons to take some downtime, right? But my favorite is how can we include inclusion? That means people aren't just a warm body where you're at. People are feeling valued. People are feeling that if they aren't there, the whole thing's going to fall apart. We know that's not true. But you want to feel that way, right? You want that to be something very important. And a great way, a great first step in getting people from within our congregation is to care about those people that are still out there. Look at those people in your community. Look at your next door neighbor. In the office, we have people call all the time. Hey, do you have anything we can volunteer at? Absolutely. This is what we have. Where are you like? Okay. Sometimes we connect them with people. Sometimes if it's something they can just come to, just show up, right? While volunteering right here amongst our own might be more comfortable, might be where we're, we're happiest, might be where we're more settled, we have to remember that it's not just about us, though. It's not about what we want. So... I want to share a story about what happened. I'm going to do a disclaimer because I don't know when the video is going to come on. If you're a little queasy about blood, you might want to just listen. Not a lot of blood, but I do want to say that. I told him I was going to share this because I said, this is Jesus in action, right? So one night at General Assembly, um, we we ran into somebody. We were, we were talking about who we could ask for dinner and... and uh, you might recognize this because we came up with the idea. We saw Brad Fink walk by, and it's like, hey, we could ask them to dinner. Okay. So we asked, and Brad said, sure, I, I'd, I'd love to. Melanie and I will join you. The kids are going to do something else. Do you mind if we bring another couple along? Yeah, we, we like meeting people. We're good with that. And so Trevor and Misty, who we've never met, never even heard their names before, joins us for dinner. And we're sitting down with dinner, and I had noticed that on Brad's little finger, um, it looked like fingernail polish. Now, he has a, a little daughter, so I was like, mm, you know, I could see a, a dad doing something like that, right? But no, that's not the case. And Melody, Melanie begins to tell the story of how Brad had recently got his finger smashed in the hydraulics part of their chair in their hotel room. Yeah, that's the, everybody at the table was like, oh, that's terrible, right? We didn't really care about Brad's finger necessarily. We just cared about the pain that we were, were hearing. And then Brad went on to explain to us that he'd had a bunch of people tell us how to relieve that pain. Some of you might know the old trick, right? You 
put something into your fingernail, and, and once that pressure from the blood under the nail is let up, it, it, it gets better. And he was suggesting a drill bit. I said, I've never done it with a drill bit. I've always done it with a needle. I heat a needle up. I've done it lots of times. It works every time. Well, of course, we're at a restaurant. There's no drill bit, right? So I think all that talking must have got his finger hurting and, and uh, because on the way, told Ed, well, if there's some place open to get a drill bit, I, I'd do that. Well, guess what God provided? Now, this was, the, this was the weird part. A 10 o'clock open Lowe's. <laughs> we pull into an almost empty parking lot, and Brad's like, oh, I don't think they're open. Ed says, well, it says it is. Trevor's in the back seat. Yep, says it is. <laughs> well, there's some people walking in. Well, let's try it. So the guys jump out of the car, right? Because this is that superhero thing I was talking about that guys possess. So the guys all jump out of the van, actually. Jump out of the van, go in. We're like, we're all, no way. This isn't what's happening right now, right? Because the three ladies are, they've got more sense. Like, this is, so we're, we're talking about our, among ourselves, when back out of the store, this is what happens. It's like a couple minutes. Maybe. It's spinning around. It won't. You're going to have to put some pressure on it. I'm sorry to tell you that. It hurts. We're going to be here. Yeah, we might be here a while. Come yeah. on, you got to put some pressure on it, right? Let <laughs> me do it. Uh, not, not, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll do it. Yeah, Trevor, Trevor, you want to? That'd be fun. I'm not letting Trevor do it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Push Ed, push. This okay. is Pastor Ed. Don't okay. stop. He's got it. Oh, oh, easy, 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 easy. No, easy. Ed, oh, don't, go. Go. Oh, I can feel it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, go, Ed. It's going to feel better once it's done. That's Trevor encouraging Ed. <laughs> I feel like it's Ew. really job, big Ed. in there. Push, push. You're like just seconds away. Brad decides to take it back on his own. Oh, oh, oh there yeah. it is, dude. Doesn't Craig, that feel better? That. Not yet. Open it. Open it, will it in a minute. Open it. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. glad? It's bubbling you're out. Bro. Uh -huh. Oh, you're so brave. <laughs> <laughs> that was Melanie, his wife, who actually did get out of the car to watch the whole process. This is. It's going to sound weird, but this is where I heard God say, that's Colossians 3.17. I am showing you what this looks like among a body of believers. Everybody there was a body of believers. But as, as you could hear, this was a case where they were living out 3.17, which says, in whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name Lord, of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. None of those words happened in that video, right? You didn't hear any of those words, but what you heard was someone in pain, people who were willing to come around with a solution and help, cheerleaders, right? Those are just encouraging you know, people to do something that can. But I thought, yeah. And by the way, the next day, everything was better, and Brad was like, that was amazing, right? You just had to get through that. So as the worship team returns to the stage, I want to really remind you, I don't get to say this too often out loud in mixed company, and because and, uh, everybody says you can't go around saying this, but I do. I want to encourage you to understand that helping isn't just for you. It's for those who are going to receive the blessing of you helping. So my two phrases are, and I'm sure at one time somebody's heard them, there's a place for everyone. Nothing's too small for anyone. There's a place. And the second one is, if you're not dead, you're not done. Thank you. I don't care what it is that you think is minute. If God has put something on your heart, listen to him. Listen to him. 
Together with these things, the most important part of your life is to love each other. This was the words we read. Love is what holds everything together in perfect unity. Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. If it is for peace that you were chosen to be together in one body, it is for peace. Bring peace. And always be thankful. Let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. Use all wisdom to teach and counsel each other. That's unity because it takes all of us, right? Sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Sometimes those things are just that cheer and encouragement while somebody's doing something that they don't want to do, right? Think about the next step that's on your card. If you looked at that, it says, I will thankfully do all that I do for Jesus. I actually have Colossians 3.17 on my to-do list. Because remember I said Barb gets in the way sometimes? So God's like, nah, you need to hear why you're doing it. That's me. So for those of you who are already following Christ, then I would invite you maybe to come forward as, as they sing this next song, Hymn of Heaven, I think, right? Yep, so there we go. Imagine that. I'm going to use a word that we don't like as Christ followers. But sometimes we have to repent. We have to say, I'm sorry. We have to turn away from what it is we've gotten comfortable with. That's taking us away to live the type of life that we've heard about we're supposed to live. And invite the Holy Spirit to guide you to greater living that's apart from the worldly living. It's called holy living. But for those of you who might not know Christ yet, those of you who might not have surrendered your lives and said, Lord Jesus, I don't want me to live. I want you to live. I would ask you to come forward and publicly give your life to him. Publicly admit, we're about to do baptism. These are people who are publicly saying, my life is no longer my own. I've told Pastor Ed, I just really feel lately, you know, sometimes we get very ritualistic and we've got our agendas. If this morning you'd like to give your life to Christ and you don't mind a little wet clothes, we got some towels. You'll dry. We can slip you out the back right into your car if you want. But I really felt like today is a day that, man, if we just need, if we need to tell Jesus, we give you everything. And I want to publicly let everybody know I've given it all. But then there's that message for every one of us. And that message is to, to ask God to show you both personally and as a family. I'll let you define the family but ask God how you can better serve people both within our church and those people whom he's still calling. He's talking to people. He's talking to us. I know he is. I would just invite us to listen as we sing and respond as you feel God directs you and leads you. And then afterward, um, I would say at this point, unless you're coming forward um, to pray, and even if you are, you can quietly, if you're actually preparing for baptism, where you've been directed to go, I'd invite you to do that just now, um, so that at the end of the song, Pastor Ed's going to come up and, and finish us out with baptism.
Amen. No, I knew if I took that out of there, I would I would lose my space. So we're we're about to celebrate baptism. And and I don't know if you realize this, but that is like a huge thing. Baptism is huge because it is an outward sign of what God is doing on the inside of people. Right? So I just want to share a little bit from our manual about what baptism is and call your attention to it. And then we're going to have some testimonies and some baptisms. And so let me start with this. It says this, when we gather together, we should start with a sacrament of baptism. It says, dearly beloved, baptism is the sign and seal of a new covenant of grace the significance of which is attested by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans as follows. So this comes out of Romans 6, verses 3 through 5. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Hallelujah. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. That's good news. That's exciting news. The earliest and simplest statement of Christian belief into which you now come to be baptized, these who are coming to be baptized, and anyone else who feels like they may be being called forward to be baptized, is the Apostles' Creed. And I'm going to read that for you. We've done series on on the Apostles' Creed. Hopefully most of you are aware of it and familiar, but I'm going to read it to you. It says, I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall judge He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church of Jesus Christ, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Today, people will come to be baptized into that belief. That's what we believe as a church. That's what we believe as followers of Christ. And so today... People will come, and my hope is that you will celebrate with them this new life, probably not brand new for any of them, at least not the three that I'm aware of, but new life that's being proclaimed publicly today, and that's exciting. So at this time, let me invite Andy, who all of you are very familiar with, to come to the microphone, and Andy's going to share Debbie's Debbie's um, testimony as Debbie comes into the pool. Good morning. Good morning. It's great to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. So uh, it's hard to believe that uh, five years ago, uh, Debbie and I were married here by Pastor Ed. And... uh, I'm so grateful that the Lord has been with her uh, through all these years and has guided her and has been with her and has um, uh, helped her to be the godly woman that she has grown to be. I praise God for all of that work that he's done in her and she and he is good. Today she makes this public her devotion and her dedication to our Lord and Savior. This is her testimony. So she says, there will never be enough words to express how thankful and blessed I feel to have a relationship with Jesus. 
to be able to look back on my life and see and know the countless times that God was there for me. Is there for me now even if I don't see it? Mm -hmm. And is already putting my future into place. I am ready to put the old me in the past where she, where she belongs from glory to glory. Amen. 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 Praise God. Debbie, let me ask you a couple questions. First, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and the Lord of all? Yes. And do you believe that he saves you? Yes, I do. Even now? Yes. Amen. Amen. So, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of you have met Jay. Others have not. But Jay, I'll let Andy tell you the story, but Jay told me, God's been telling me I need to be baptized, and Andy led me to this church. So Andy is here, actually, mostly because of Jay. Jay. And then found out that Debbie was going to be baptized too. So I'm excited about all of this. And I'll let Andy share the rest of that testimony. So I guess everybody's wondering why I'm here for Jay, actually. Uh, him and I go back a pretty long ways. Uh, it's not during the time that I delivered uh, mail, and he was one of my customers. And um, so he, he was more than that to me. Uh, there were times that him and I, when I was delivering mail, he... Uh, We'd stop and we'd chat and he'd tell me uh, all the things that are going in, on in his life and what God is doing with him as, as well as I, sh I shared with him uh, what God was doing in my life. And I always invited him here to church. And, uh, well, he never came, but he's here today. Amen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> with courage and publicly to show his love and commitment, uh, and this is his testimony. <clears throat> the heading is, It's Time. 32 years ago, my life changed. I was always in trouble, up and out of jail, served time in jail, both county and state prisons, because of my addiction to heroin and drinking. But with my addiction, came stealing, lying, and cheating, everything for my next fix. This addiction also caused, caused me to live on the streets, to avoid parole from county, from country to different country, from county to different counties, not to get caught. I had burnt all my bridges, family, friends. It left me nowhere to turn. As this cycle continued, I was caught again back in jail. After serving several prison sentences, my final arrest, I was brought before the Superior Court <coughs> judge who gave me an opportunity to attend a program, a detox program. Though the judge said, you will either make or break this program, as I was the first to be given this chance. So here I was, detoxing from the heroin and the methadone and hitting rock bottom. Even though this was not my first time detoxing, but I was so sick, empty, and lost. I didn't want to continue living like this. I wanted to end this horrible addiction and way of life. So I hit my knees, prayed for God's help to have him come into my life to give me the strength to get through this. Hallelujah. At that moment, hallelujah, <clears throat> I felt the Holy Spirit and knew I was on my way to recovery. It's been 32 years, and I have never looked back. <laughs> Praise, Praise God. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Jay, let me ask you. Do you believe Jesus is the Son of God and that He is Lord of all? Yes. Do you believe that He saves you? Yes. And do you believe He saves you right now? Yes. Praise God. Well, Amen. in that case, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome, brother. God bless you. Come on out here. Just because of all those cords. And many of you know Damon. Damon has been talking to me about being baptized for a little while now. And so he's asked Pastor Barb to speak for him. You should take your wallet out there, brother. (laughs) Come on. It's cold. It's cold? I'm sorry. Damon says, I don't have a testimony. I'm like, oh, yeah, you do. I said, when did you give your your life to Christ? He said, a long time ago. And I said, praise the Lord that you've been living a testimony of what Christ can do every day in your life. So um, I would would say for Damon that, uh, you know, he is someone that definitely has demonstrated how Christ's love is truly unconditional how he continues to want more for us, wants better for us, and how as we submit ourselves, as we surrender ourselves, we find ourselves serving, but for all the right reasons. Mm -hmm. So everything that he does is is with gratitude to thanks um, for what God is doing in his life, and he continues to do. And so today we celebrate that new life that continues day after day after day. And amen. 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 Damon, do you believe that Jesus is Lord and Jesus is the Son of God? Yes, I do. And do you believe that he saves you? Always. Even today? Definitely today. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Okay. Praise God. Praise God. In that case, let me invite you to stand and receive a blessing. May the Lord, Jesus Christ, go with you wherever you go, and may you always realize and recognize his presence in your life. And as you do that, share him with everybody that you can. In the name of Jesus, I send you. Go. Make a difference. Amen. Amen.